The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has directed the People's Democratic Party in Abia State to conduct a fresh primary election in the next 14 days to replace its governorship candidate, Professor Uchi Ileaza Ikone, who died in Abuja. A statement from Ikone's family said he died of multiple cardiac arrest. Uh, in directing the PDP to replace its governorship candidate, INEC clarified that the deputy governorship candidate of the party could not be automatically or could not automatically assume the position of the gubernatorial candidate since the election was not yet done. Well, joining us to discuss this is Tunji Abdulhamid. He's a member of Kwara State PDP Presidential and State Campaign Council. And also joining us is um, John Shoaibu. He's a member of the People's Democratic Party Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. Can you hear me? Good evening. Yeah. I can hear you. Great, great, great. I I'm going to start with you, John. Um, it's very interesting um, that um, may not be a positive reason why we're here, but unfortunately, Ikone has passed. But then um, the PDP seems to be faced with um, a, a few days to produce a new governorship candidate for the party. That means, of course, the party needs to look within. But what's most important is that um, when the primaries were, was done in Abia State, the, the chairman of the party and, of course, the governor of the state had not been seeing eye to eye. So, again, we wonder, how is this going to happen without, you know, feathers being ruffled? First of all, um, a deep condolence to the family of our opponent and to the PDP family worldwide for the loss of Professor who unfortunately uh, passed on due to ill health. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody can die at any time, but for us, it's painful. A minute of silence was even taken yesterday in a bone for, his, for him. But uh, having said that, um, you know, the, the running battle between the uh, governor, the senior governor, and chairman, I think it's, it's not something that uh, will hinder or, you know, the smooth. Uh, primaries that will be run now, because uh, if you look at it, the chairman is the father of the party, and of course, as the father of the party, he wants everyone inclusive to uh, include it in the whole process, and Governor Pazwe is not excluded from it. So I believe, for the mere fact that we want to win, and to win well nationally, the, the chairman will also want a situation where there shall be unity of purpose. Now, uh, how do we harmonize this depends on the, 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 was the disposition of the governor who has been having a running battle. But for me, I don't see uh, Governor Epazio being a challenge to the smooth running of, of the primaries at the end of the day because uh, the constraints there that will guide and everything I believe will go smoothly as uh, we know determined by, that will be determined at the end of the primaries. So for me, there shouldn't be an issue with the uh, the crisis, seeming crisis between the chairman and the governor, which of course you know starts from uh, the G five issue. So let me let, let me push you further. Now we know that this is the modus operandi. Whether it's spoken, it's formally agreed to or not, governors always pick their preferred predecessors, and that's who they put, you know, front as the party's flag bearer. And we know that this is who Iqbazu preferred as his, you know, um, the person that he's going to, you know, going to come after him. He preferred him as the presidential, uh, the, I beg your pardon, the governorship candidate. Does this not seem as a setback for him? Because, you know, again, he must have had his reasons for picking Ikone to be the man who will succeed him. I'm asking once again, Knowing that Iqbazu is part of the G5 governors and the situation between the G5 governors and the chairman or the national chairman of your party, will this not be a big setback, not just for the party? Because again, if the governor was the one who picked and now the party has to superintend and this, there is no love lost between these two, I, how are we certain that this will be a very smooth process, knowing what's already on the ground? Well... First of all, the, the national chairman can't uh, micromanage the primaries. The people in Abia, the uh, ADP stakeholders in Abia, know exactly who they want to, you know, to run that position. You know, uh, the, the governor who, I would say, seemingly 
have a late uh, prop Ikone as his preferred candidate. Of course, probably will have somebody to throw into the into the game again. But I believe that uh, the whole mechanism will favor whoever is popular because I believe the governor will also wants someone that can win election because we don't have days. Whoever is coming will be a fresh person right now. So we don't have time to really look for a new threat into the, that will play the game or someone that is unpopular. Therefore, uh, we, we won't have that time. So the governor also, I think, should, you know, will be, will take cognizance of this and we want someone that would actually continue his program or, you know, at the end of the day. So he will want to pick in some, bring in someone who would not continue his program, who will want, who will make us lose the election because we have, we have other candidates, strong candidates in Abia that will act, actually pushing for that top uh, job in Abia. So I believe at the end of the day, there will be a synergy between the, uh, the national uh, uh, working committee and the state governor, and also the stakeholders in Abia who already, I believe, are prepared. For now, we have our four candidates that are ready to go for the fourth February election. So I don't know, I think we'll, 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 it will play out, and I don't know they will we'll come out top of it and get the best candidate that will run the election and give us victory in Abia. Junji, let me come to you. Replacing Ikone, like I said earlier on, might be very, a very tough job for the people of the PDP in Abia State. Um, again, knowing that Ikone was not just any governorship candidate, a professor, um, someone who knows his onion, um, how easy will it be for the Abia State PDP to shop for yet another candidate? Yes, there were those who, um, one way or the other, you know, contested side by side Ikone, but Ikone emerged. And like I said earlier on, there's something that the governor must have seen in him. It's 14 days that the PDP has to make sure that they shop for somebody and he emerges. How easy a task is that going to be? Uh, before I go into that, let me also cons uh, 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 condole with the people of Abia State and the PDP family, family in general. Uh, I think uh, it may not be a difficult situation for them to be able to get a uh, another right way person. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't only him that showed the interest I, initially. There are other people who showed interest. Only that the, 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 the people or the party uh, uh, in the state prefer the, I'm talking about the PDP uh, members now, prefer the Ikone and probably the governor also support uh, Ikone that, or, 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 or gave this, his support to Ikone to, to emerge. I, I think uh, there won't be any much uh, pressure problem in picking uh, uh, other candidates because uh, he wasn't the only person who conducted, who, who, who showed interest. There are other aspirants, and, and, and I believe out of all of them, there are other people who are more competent to also do the job. He may, he wasn't the, he may just be fortunate to, to win the primary. He may not be the, even the most uh, qualified. There are other people who, are, who may be more qualified, maybe probably because of certain thing or the other. He has an edge because of certain support or maybe other certain uh, influence in, the, in courts. He may, he, he might. So the shopping, shopping for another candidate may not be a, 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 a big deal because uh, there are people already on grant who are interested. And as, as we speak, people are already just lobbying in between to be able to say, look, I want to be uh, uh, the next governor of uh, Abia State, uh, or the candidate of the PDP, as it, as it may be. So uh, I think it won't be a difficult job for them to, to get another candidate as, as it is. It won't be. Let's look at the, the situation of his death. Unfortunately, we have to discuss that on the show. Um, he did die as a result of cardiac arrest. Now, um, looking at politicians, especially at the federal level, many there's been a lot of banter about health and, you know, um, if the, these people who are contesting for these positions are in the best state of health, they have a clean bill of health. Um, should this not be a major consideration, not necessarily for the party, but for whoever is running and who, the people who surround them, to make sure that they have a clean bill of health to avoid you know, these kinds of circumstances? For example, um, seven people would say that they, they are okay. Um, that the doctors say they can do it, but half the time, if you do have something that, uh, you know, a terminal disease of sorts, it can, um, one way or the other, show its ugly head, especially with the stress of running around and campaigning, uh, especially for the presidential candidates. But in this case, should this not be uh, something that parties must, you know, press upon the candidates, especially for, for a situation that has just come out a few days to the election? Uh, you see, in as much as uh, I, I believe that uh, it's important as well for us, for, for anybody who wants to become a, 
a governor, a House of Member, or President, or whatever, to have a clean the bill of eggs. Uh, you think uh, you see uh, 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 the sickness does not determine who will die first or whatever. So there are some people who have been bedridden for years or for months. They are still alive. There are some people who do not even have any sign of a sickness and they are dead. So it's not it's not it's, it's, it's not the fact that you have a clean bill of uh, eggs does not guarantee that you will die or you will not die. So uh, but we as a as human being we need to be assured that look you are fit you are okay. That, and, and, and for me, in that regard, I will, uh, it will be better for us to have a medical check for all people who want to aspire to be either any, to hold any position, uh, elective position in this country. Because we are aspiring to be a, 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 to, hold, to occupy any position in this country at, as, as, a, a, at all. It's, it's enough big deal to have a, a, a issue with your head because there are a lot of problems that come with it. So if you are not too fit, if you are not too physically and uh, mentally fit, you may even have your problem uh, 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 become uh, bigger. You see, well, I'm not a medical doctor, but we hear that look, once you are 40, you, you, are, you, are, you are prone to have one medical challenge or, or the other. If, if there's not, so it depends on how you manage it. And there are some people who have been going around with a different kind of a disease or, 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 or health challenges for years, and they are still alive. And there are some that will just start in the day, and the next day, they will hear, what we hear is that they are, that they are dead. So uh, the issue of health may not be the, uh, the issue of uh, having a certificate may not be the, the diastic to determine whether or not you have the, you, you, you will die or you will not die. But uh, like to answer your question directly, I think it's important for us to be on the safe side, to at least have, have, your, have, have, have your, your, your medical check to know whether you are even having any major uh, 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 terminal disease or you don't have any terminal uh, disease. Because the job itself comes with another uh, problem, which may even affect your uh, 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 ex. OK, let me come back to you, John. Um, Again, I, I, I'm reiterating the pressures that come with running for office at whatever level, whether it be at the state level, at the federal level, there are pressures that come with it. The fact that you have to go around and campaign and do a lot of media rounds, the, the pressures are there. We can, all, we can all see. But I'm most curious as to why Nigerian politicians never make their health status public. And I'm going to go down back down memory lane. Remember the former president, Yaradwa, um, and the stories that surrounded or were fueled by suspicion as to his health, and it was co continuously covered up until he passed, unfortunately. We've also seen um, a sitting president with going abroad every single time to, you know, for medical checks, etc., etc., and none of this information has been made public. We just hear that he's going to, you know, get himself checked. But in other climes, if the president, his wife, somebody in the cabinet is diagnosed of something, they make it public so people understand that this is what he's going through. But in Nigeria, that's not even, it's not, it's not on the table, it's not in the cards. Why is that the situation? Um, is it because, I mean, I'm wondering, should that not be a true test of some form of level of trust that the people should have or share with whoever the person is? Well, uh, like Tuji Riley said, the issue of health challenge, you can't actually, you know, pinpoint or say exactly who would die and who would die, right? And some illnesses come even via the job description. At the end of the day, when you get into the job, some illness will can spring up, which wasn't there before, because you have a lot of things that will come in, into play that you need to deal with, you know. But uh, having said that, you know, Africans being what we are, you know, nobody wants to reveal what is wrong with him. You know, we have we were talking about different times. What how the way we, we see things or view things when it comes to certain things is quite different. But I think if it's put in the law, uh, that should suffice. But also the question is, we will be able to trust our health system to give everyone, you know, a clean bill that was the right bill, the right uh, what was it called, report. Because there is probability also of reading. So you're saying report. to me, so you're so, telling me, John, that you do not trust the Nigerian health system. So you'd be one of those people who would be okay with our leaders continuously going on their health tourisms abroad because they don't trust the country's doctors. But no, then these same that, doctors that is, no, 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 are no. the ones who are doing great abroad, who are actually running away from your country. No, no, that is not the point. For instance, when uh, President Buhari, we saw when he came in, he went to where he was going abroad to get, uh, you know, for treatment. 
But you saw he's now quite healthy right now. He's looking healthy. He didn't die in, in, in office. So certain things come up with age. It comes up with circumstances surrounding even in the office you're running for. So for me, let us put it into law. Then we can, you know, it can now play out for every other candidate. I think it's very important actually because there's no need to 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 put people under that on a good account of pressure where you have to be second guessing your leaders concerning their health issues where they can't really govern the way they are supposed to govern due to their mental capacity and physical ability. So it's quite important that uh, we actually maybe they will give the law, the electoral law, to say, look, let's include it in there. So I will know exactly what is the health status of everyone. But I want to reiterate again, there must be a way you can check because if you bring it to a screening committee, for instance, in the parties, how do they now reconfirm what the report has been brought? So it's going to be a whole process. Maybe within the process, even for uh, you know the final submission of names, they probably the party will also have to run their own, even if the candidate has to bring their report from a probably another hospital. So it's a it's a it's a fifty fifty thing. So I believe though, if it's put into law, it will work for us, and we'll have a better you know, candidates that will run uh, governance for us appropriately and not run abroad every time, every, every uh, week that they want to uh, their, go for their health, health uh, what they call checkup. But that also, you know, indicts the health system. Why is it that the health system is not working? Why do they have to go abroad? That they, have to, they can do that here. They can do the checkup here. They can treat them here. If the health system is put into place, where you want well-funded, quality health facilities, you have doctors that are not japa, you know, we will have a situation with certain issues that even, you know, uh, are enduring health challenges will have been sorted out before traveling abroad. So for me, it's, you just have to put it into law. If not, there's no law saying anyone should to tell us what his health status is. I think there's a uh, patient, doctor, privacy in such a situation. Mm. There is no a law. I don't have to declare. Tunji, should this not necessarily be a mo morality issue as opposed to uh, a, a, something that we should be legislating upon? Again, I go back to saying in other climes, um, let's say, for example, the president has Parkinson's or whatever it is, because again, we age comes all sorts of things. And sometimes you're young and healthy, but these things show up. And knowing that as these diseases continue to spread or you're managing it, it might affect your job. What's wrong with coming out plain to say, well, this is what I'm dealing with and we're hoping that we can manage it and I can still serve you as the people. Will that not one way or the other bridge the trust deficit gap that we're experiencing in the country, Tunji? Yeah, all, all, all is about trust. It's about the trust in the system, trust in our people, trust in our... Because you see, we are African and uh, most times people, the way we think it, is different from, from the way they think it. When, when we are sick, some people will even tell you, don't tell anybody they are sick. That they, when you tell people, they will, they will compare it for you. I don't know, I don't know the, where they carry, they carry that belief from. So the people believe that exposing your health uh, uh, challenge may even aggravate the health itself, uh, the challenge itself. So the trust is, is what, what our problem is. But whether or not we put it in the law, whether or not it's, it's even moral, whether if we say, okay, the, uh, yeah, every candidate or every aspirant must submit his medical report or must be clear by a medical team or whatever for him to contest, I tell you, everybody will be clear. You, let me give why I say so. You, the, for you to be a minister, for you to be uh, this and that, you must, you must be clear by the DSS of lack of, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, of all uh, uh, corrupt, uh, corrupt uh, cases and the other thing. You will be clear. They will do checks on you. They will run a check on you. And the check will come clear. They, as soon as you become the, 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 the you, you become a minister or whatever, issue that I have done five years after or six years after will be raised by the same people who cleared you. So you can see my, where I have the problem. In other words, people will have their way when it comes to, I want to get clearance. They know how to get it. The, so the trust in the system is the problem. We don't have people who say, look, I have, the, I have a job to do. And my job is to do the right thing, not to favor anybody. Everybody will be clear. That is the truth. No matter how much I said that person is not a, 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 the party or whoever that is there, and not in support of his, a, a, being a, a, a candidate or, or whatever, that's when he, they, will, they, will, they, will, they will raise uh, the issue. But if they, are, they are, if they want him to be the candidate, I assure you, when the health status will be, whether or not he has challenges or he doesn't have any challenges, it will be a clean bill. Of. So we need to build on that trust in the system. We don't, we don't need to have people who will see that, look, 
we must do the right thing. I don't see any. I don't see challenges. In, anybody can fall sick. Anybody can 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 get any 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 any, any uh, can be diagnosed for any for any sickness. So I, I am not exposing it to me as, as far as I'm concerned. I don't see what is bad in it. But in where in Africa where everybody sees it as an, as as, ta as a taboo for you to disclose your health, uh, uh, challenges. So I, I think uh, to me it's a matter of uh, uh, if we compare ourselves with uh, people abroad, we are not uh, the same with them in, the, in this our uh, 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 in this part of our, our, our country. We, we we complain about our our president candidate being uh, 70 or whatever. I and mean, we applaud the U.S. having over 80, uh, about 80 years a uh, 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 person as candidate uh, or as president, even uh, even. So uh, we have a different uh, situation in this, in this in this country, and we need to, like I said earlier on, it is not about your age. It is not about uh, uh, whether you have a test or medical report or not. There are people who have who have not been, who have who have not who don't even have any challenge at all. They will just fall down and and, and die just suddenly, and it, it happens. So what we need to do is that if we need people who will be sincere. To say, look, I have these challenges. I have this problem. Going to this uh, 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 job will create more uh, effort for me and for my for my state or for my people or whatever, and not go into it. But when you have big uh, like a uh, life uh, terminal disease, and you see what to engage yourself in this kind of a uh, 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 job, you are you are creating more problem for yourself in terms of health, as far as I'm concerned. Because the job of governing people, the job the job of representing people, is more tasking. It's even it can even give you more more at, at, at attack than even uh, when you don't even have anything at all. So I think, it's a, it's like you said, I want to agree with you, it's a moral thing. Everybody should just say, look, I have a job. I have this problem. Let me be open. I have, if, if people can say, look, notwithstanding your challenges, we want you to go and represent us, that yeah. would be a different case. But yeah. just if, expose yourself first. Let's know what you have. Let's know what's happening to you. Let's know your challenges. Nobody is above this uh, being, being sick. Nobody is, uh, we, are all, we are all human beings. You can fall okay. sick anytime. You can, anybody can die anytime. Okay. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's not be an issue, it should be a moral issue. Whether you make it a law or not, we may still not be able to. Because in Nigeria, I have always been maintained that law is not our problem. Mm. We are obeying the law and enforcing the law is our problem. If you yeah. make it the law, they will still bypass the law. And okay. things th that are not supposed to be done will still be done. Let me come back to you, John. Still talk, staying with health issues. Um, this morning, I listened to a conversation uh, with the NDLEA boss, um, and former military governor, uh, military administrator of Lagos State, Pubamara, and he talked about the necessity, in fact, that they, they're pushing a bill right now in the works to make sure that all persons who are running for public office will go through a drug test. What's your take on this? I agree with him. When it comes to drug tests, I agree with him because, you know, drug has a way of replacing you of taking a wrong decision. So you can't trust someone, for instance, who is the number one position, who is a drug addict, for instance. And probably when he's high, or she's high, she decides to take decisions that can destroy the nation in one swoop. You know, the, for instance, if you have a person who has drug issues, or who is a drug addict, you can understand what will happen if he decides to take some executive action without recall to the fact that is it right or wrong. You know, he's influenced by the drug, and you rational in thinking. So I think that, for me, is very important. We need to do that. We need to get that into law. Everyone must, get, must, must be tested for drug intake. That is important for me. Okay, Tunji, finally, before we wrap things up here, uh, if we say that it's okay to legislate on drugs, how about psych evaluations? How about alcoholism? All of these things, do they not one way or the other affect one's thinking and the decision-making process? I, I think uh, most of these things, uh, what, what the, the complaint is the excessive uh, use of it. I think that's that because there are some drugs, uh, uh, there are some medication that have these uh, uh, drugs that, 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 uh, that, that does affect your uh, psyche sometimes or, or, or have uh, influence on you sometimes. And, and some of them are not a, a banned a, a, a drug or whatever. So I, I think uh, the drug, being a drug addict, like you said, may, 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 may affect your decision whenever things are not, you are on your high, and then it may, you may take decisions that will affect the entire country and may even uh, go away. So if, if you want to do that, uh, how sure are we, do we have the, are we going to put in place necessary machinery that will, that, will, that, will be, that, will, that will be clean, that will, that will be open, that will be transparent? To be able to say, look, this person uh, is this and that, and how 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 many how long will it is it? Because if I know I'll be going for tests, and I know I want to contest election, 
I may try to restrain from it for for maybe a year or two to be able to at least uh, come clean to for for for, to, 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 for, for, for the drug test, and then after or upon 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 crossing the, 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 the road, I go back to where I come from. They are, they all are all are issues. You see, it's all about well, what we need is we need people with sincerity. We need people who will say, look. I am not fit for this for this job. I am not I'm not caught for this job. I can't do this thing. I can't do that. Mm. And that I think that's what we need. Not just a law, 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 law. We, we have a law of law in this country, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. There is law, I love there is law. We have we have a law of law in this country. They're following the law, enforcing the law has been our problem, as far as I'm concerned. It okay. is not about the law. It's, there is law already that forbids you from taking a drug. People okay. are taking it. All right. Well, I, 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 I believe. I also believe that the people have a duty. To also ensure that whoever they are bringing uh, to court should be people of good character, because that is very important. That is why we need to have a good, you know, the, a sensitization of the people. Because the kind of people you will bring forth, you know, they have a health challenge. It's mm. from your local area. You okay. know, you have a health challenge. You can't say it. Mm. why, and you know they are drugs that is, about and you should bring them. I, I okay. still bring them. That's a problem. Okay, you well, know. Well, we gotta go, guys. So you're Thank you. That time is not our friend. Tunji Abdul Hamid is a member of the Choir State PDP Presidential and State Campaign Council, and also he's a legal practitioner. We also want to say thank you to John Schreiber, who's a member of the PDP uh, Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for having this conversation with me. Thank you, Evan. Thank, thank you. Well, thank you for staying with us. We will take a quick break now. When we return, we'll be discussing the sacking of Oshun State Governor Adimola Deleke by a tribunal in Oshun State. Stay with us. Thank you.